that? I said almost everything. You can't understand the difference. Oh, my bad. I was just trying to, you know, find out its limitations for me and my partner, that's all. But it does need a window, right? I was getting to that. Yes, it needs a window to work. Put, 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 put it down. Rick is back, and you can catch more of Stephen A's cameo in General Hospital this Wednesday. Check your local listings. Can I just Very say one thing? Very nice, my brother. Very nice. I've seen a few now, and they've all been good, but each one gets better. This was by far your best episode yet. Well, I was very touched. I got I to gotta be humble here and give a lot of love to two people. Number okay. one, the star of the show. Uh, Sonny, who plays Sonny Corinthos, uh -huh. Maurice Bernard, he's the absolute best. Yep. And of course, the man himself, the man, the myth, the legend, Victor Newman from Young and the Restless, who's uh -huh. a friend of mine. He played, his real name is Eric Braden. He'll actually be in studio soon. Love uh, it. That's my man right there. He gave me a few tips as well between him and the great, great Maurice Bernard, who coaches me before every scene practically. I, I can't take credit. I'm very, very grateful. You did your Thank thing. Thank you very much. And we'll see you again yeah, Wednesday? Man. Yes, I will be on again Wednesday. Okay. Rick will return to General Hospital on Wednesday. We love it. Yes. All right, let's get back to the game, guys. Another show we saw last night. The Falcons led 28-3 to until two minutes left in the third, but then allowed the Patriots to come all the way up and force OT and ultimately get the job done the Patriot way. So Max put out a poll on Twitter last night. You can follow him at Max Kellerman. He had over 12,000 votes asking who is most to blame, Matt Ryan, Dan Quinn or Kyle Shanahan. But Stephen A, I want to get your thoughts first. Who do you think deserves the most blame for this epic collapse? You know what? I'm going to go with the, the soon-to-be new coach and new head coach for the San Francisco 49ers. It's going to be Kyle Shanahan. Now, obviously, Quinn gets some of the blame as well. The buck stops with the head coach, and the head coach has a lot to do with it. We understand and we expect, we respect it and appreciate that. But Kyle Shanahan is the guy calling the plays offensively. He's the one that's been paraded all over the airwaves in terms of his personal relationship with Matt Ryan and how they've cultivated with one another. We get all of that. I'm looking at a, a, a running attack that was running roughshod all over New England that suddenly disappeared. I'm looking at the fact that Julio Jones wasn't targeted nearly as much as he should have been. I'm looking at that. I'm also looking at the fact that after that catch by Julio Jones with 27 yards, we tap dance on the sidelines before falling out of bounds. Again, the very next play, a running play. Then after that, it ain't just that Matt Ryan was drop, was passing. That was like a seven-step drop for crying out loud. He lost 12 yards on that sack. Why would you call that? And if you're going to call a passing play there, it certainly shouldn't be something that deep. And so when you look at it from that perspective, I think that to some degree it was a deer caught in headlights by the coaches. Uh, I think that Bill Belichick knew what he was going up against. We can look at Quinn as well because Quinn is on the defensive side of the ball and he's responsible for both sides. So you certainly could give him more culpability. But the reason why I'm looking at Kyle Shanahan is because what got you here was your offense. Number one ranked overall. Number three passing attack. Number five rushing attack. You certainly could have, you know, been a bit more. I'm on, I don't want to say more aggressive because sometimes you got to know when to be aggressive and you got to know when to step back. You got to feel this moment. And I don't think they did that. And that's why I'm looking at him. They're all good choices, by the way. But the answer, in fact, is Dan Quinn. And you mentioned why. Because the buck stops with the head coach. Because you can point to follies all over the field. Look, Tom Brady tried to give them the ball a couple times. In the red zone, he tried to give him the ball. He didn't seem to want it. You know, like, you can point to the defense. You can point to all kinds of missed opportunities and different plays, etc. But sometimes there's a uniquely high leverage moment in a game that will decide the outcome of that game. And that was when they were in field goal position. They were in field goal range. And all you had to do was call two running plays, and you, I mean, you were overwhelmingly likely to win that game. And instead, they don't. Now, you can blame Kyle Shanahan. He's the offensive coordinator. Here's the problem. And this is why it's uniquely, in this case, also Dan Quinn's problem, Stephen A. Smith. He had just been on the coaching staff on a team that handed the, the Patriots the Super Bowl, according to what you call the worst play call in the history of the NFL, really. Because if it's the worst in the Super Bowl, it's the worst in the history of the NFL. And he was the offensive coordinator, excuse me, the defensive coordinator on that team. Mm -hmm. And he watched as Daryl Bevel made the wrong decision, and he was powerless to do anything about it because he's a coordinator on the other side of the ball. The buck doesn't stop with him then. And you would think that he had to be thinking to himself in that moment, when I am the head coach of a team, 
I am going to make sure if I am ever in this position that I don't get this wrong. Like he just experienced it in a way that like you touch the stove and get burnt. But even beyond that, because he didn't have control over that situation, he had control over this situation and allowed the offensive coordinator on the team once again to make the wrong call, not once, but twice consecutively in the game where now he's the head coach. I'm sorry, that was the moment that absolutely determined that game. It was in Dan Quinn's power to stop it, to make it turn out right for him. He decided not to. The buck stops with well, him. The buck definitely stopped with him. Nobody could argue that point. I guess what I'm looking at, Max, is the fact that Kyle Shanahan is trying to become a head coach. Quinn already is one. And so when you're trying to become a head coach and your offense is what brought you there, the fact that you would make such decisions is what resonates with me. Because if I'm the San Francisco 49ers, I'm kind of looking at you and saying, but Damn, Maybe what he you thought doing? his offense could get it done. And, so. and I get high risk, high reward. And obviously well, well, doing well, it well, twice is crazy, well, well, but maybe they thought they had to get the six. Part of, the, part of what you do offensively is not just about doing what you do. But it's also about sensing what you're up against. It's also about, I remember when you sit up there, when, when, when we watched Chip Kelly coaching the uh, Philadelphia Eagles, mm -hmm. and you had some dudes that were screaming like, damn, just get a first down. Take your time. Walk to the huddle. Let us catch a deep breath for crying out loud. Why? And you had coaches literally on the sidelines going at it with one another. It wasn't just because of schemes or whatever the case may be. It was because we need a break. We understand what's going on here, and you're just going to throw us to the wolves, cut us some slack. I'm saying if you're Shanahan, as an offensive coordinator who's about to be a head coach, by the way, a head coach is about to get a six-year deal because we know if John Lynch got a six-year deal and he's never been in the front office executive a day in his life, then we know good and damn well Kyle Shanahan's about to get a six-year deal as well. So I'm looking at it from that perspective, and I'm saying – you know all of this. You see what Tom Brady is doing. You see the momentum shifting. More importantly, you know your players well enough to look into their eyes and know what time it is, even though you were up in the booth. You know this. So you got to take all of those things into consideration because essentially right now, this is going to be in your hands. Why do I say that? Everybody's making noise about Atlanta's defense and what Atlanta's defense did the second half of the season. When they closed out the season with the last four games, let me remind the world, it was against the Los Angeles Rams. Mm -hmm. It was against the San Francisco 49ers, two jokes of franchises. And then after that, you had a subpar Carolina team and a no defense having New Orleans Saints team. And then in the postseason, you went against Seattle, which was a bit debilitated on the offensive side of the ball. And then you had Green Bay, whose secondary was decimated. So all of those things were nothing compared to what you were faced with yesterday. Knowing that, you got to feel all of that and go forward. Second point about Dan Quinn. So, one, he should have learned from his Seattle experience. Yep. Now the buck stops with him, and how he let that happen again when he had control over the situation is beyond me. The second thing is he got totally outcoached in the second half of the game. Belichick went and made adjustments, right, especially on Julio Jones. And suddenly, it's not just that one phase of the game. Look, if the offense wasn't clicking, fine. Yep. Blame Shanahan. They were getting destroyed on offense, on defense, and on special teams, that's all three phases of the game. Now, you could say, well, players have to make the plays, and that's true. But ultimately, the only one person who has, con has some control over all three phases of the game is the head coach. So not only in the moment of truth did he blow it. And that, by the way, I'm not against Dan Quinn. I wish him the best. Wish he would have won. That would have been a fun show to but do. But that's when you saw Belichick's greatness in terms of him out, coach. second half adjustments. But we got to give him credit. I know you guys are going to say it's the first half. Who cares? But that defense did look incredible getting after Brady in that Molly, first half. But Molly, that's why it's on Dan Quinn because coming in, they had all the advantages. They were more, they were more talented. But I was so impressed that initial first half. I understand the coaching, that didn't last. The coaching adjustments at halftime mm -hmm. really show you Who's who? Of course. And he got totally outclassed. Of course. No question. We'll leave it there. When we come back, the Falcons drop a heartbreaker almost two years after Malcolm Butler's infamous interception against the Seahawks. Which loss is more devastating? They'll find out next. And in the same year, he suspended Tom Brady. Roger Goodell hands the Lombardi Trophy to the Patriots quarterback. So is it now time to finally leave the New England Patriots alone? You don't want to miss that discussion. A lot has transpired during the last two years. And I don't think that needs any explanation. Case Closed is brought to you by LegalZoom. Get help for your business and family at LegalZoom.com.